agency quotes officials as saying that the asteroid now entering our portion of the solar system poses no threat to Earth. Meanwhile, NASA's viewpoint is substantiated by observatories as far away as Siberia and Peking. However, as might be expected, official sources in Moscow and Peking do have a difference of opinion as to the size and mass of the space intruder. Nevertheless, the world scientific community is generally agreed on one thing. The asteroid is on a collision course with the moon. After the impact, astronomers will no doubt have to add a new crater to their maps of our already pockmarked moon. In any event, we will interrupt our regular programs to keep you informed of the now certain collision in outer space and to bring you any further bulletins from leading observatories or from NASA. Hi, Paul. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Longbow. Johnny, what? Sorry for rushing the Halloween season. It was too good to resist. What? You can come out now. Show's over. <laughs> come Dracula at your service. And better known on campus as Bud Keeler and Janet Price. Hi, do forgive us. <laughs> These, I'm afraid, are two of my students at the university. Unfortunately, I'm saddled with them for my summer field course, just as you were saddled with me. Not quite. You decided to switch from anthropology to mineralogy at the graduate level. Until that point, I thought you had a fair degree of sense. <laughs> was it you that made that god-awful sound? That was me, I'm afraid. <laughs> he also does bird calls, but don't get him started. Janet, like I keep telling you, an anthropology major these days should have more than one talent. <laughs> That's a talent? Bird calls? <laughs> I'm 
Kathy Nolan. Paul. Paul Carlson. Don't tell me you're a student. Miss Nolan's doing a picture story in the religious customs of the tribes around here, especially my own people. That's why Bud happened to have a ceremonial mask. Really, my idea. I borrowed the mask from the collection at the reservation to do some mood shots on location out here. But when we were heading back and I saw you, and Professor Salinas explained you were a friend, well, I'm afraid the bright idea of using it for a practical joke and getting some shots of your reaction was my idea. Thanks. I'm glad to know. I'm afraid we got more reaction than I bargained for. <laughs> I, I won't use the shot. That's a promise. Am I forgiven? Of course, Miss Nolan. Kathy, to my friends. We are friends. We are, Kathy. Uh, we were just on our way to Professor Salinas' place at the reservation. He's promised us an authentic Indian supper. Won't you join us? Uh, I'd like to, if it's, if it's all right with uh, Johnny Longbow. It's all right with me. No problem at all. Just follow my car. Um, why do you call him Johnny Longbow? Well, it's his Indian name. His tribal one. It translates warrior's bow that reaches long to its mark. Actually, he handles a bow like one of his ancestors. There's additional word from NASA this evening concerning the asteroid that collided with the moon two days ago. Radio telemetry from the seismometers planted on the moon's surface and previous Apollo missions have recorded the shock of the impact as beyond the end of the Richter scale. On Earth, this would be a disturbance that would rival the explosion in the 19th century of the volcanic island of Krakatoa. The impact on the moon has sent off a shower of fragments mixed with pieces of the asteroid. Some of these small fragments will enter Earth's atmosphere tonight, but they will undoubtedly explode into nothing more than a harmless shower of tiny meteorites, according to NASA officials. The greatest concentration of this meteor shower will be over the southwest region of the United States. This meteor shower will be, however, quite harmless according to the statement from NASA, and likely to provide nothing more than a spectacular sight in the skies. And that's the story of the awesome collision on the moon today. This is Gary Kanan from our news center in Albuquerque. I didn't schedule a meteor shower as part of the evening entertainment at the reservation. But it should be quite a sight. Well, this is a great meal, Professor. That's a great stew. Mm. What's in it? Oh, a lot of things. Chicken, corn, green peppers, mm. chili, onions. Uh, well, it's an old recipe around here. Well, if nobody minds, I think I'll have some more. Uh, all for the cause of research, naturally. <laughs> I'm glad that's what you call it. <laughs> you know, I'd like to get some night shots of this area. Well, if you don't mind me tagging along, I know a few great spots, but they're pretty far away. get used to lizards here. They're quite common. That's why tribes in this area have so many legends about lizards. Like uh, what, for instance? Such as the story of uh, lizard and coyote, for instance. In the days before there were men on Earth. Sounds like it's going to be the uh, Navajo version of Genesis. <laughs> Ignore him, Professor. I'd like to hear the story. It'll have no effect on your grades. <laughs> I don't expect it to. I'd just like to hear it. Well, one day, before man walked on Earth, Lizard and Coyote were having an argument about what shape man would take. Lizard won the argument. They finally agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards. For 
fingers and a thumb. Hey, that's right. Was that the end of the story? Not quite. Coyote drove a hard bargain. He agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards rather than his paws. But only, only if man would be mortal and never again try to be like lizard. Quite a distance up here. Although we've got a lot more air pollution than we used to. That's Albuquerque over there. And that road leads to Santa Fe, northeast. And the river's over there. Paul, where are we exactly? I'm sorry. We're on the top of Sandia Crest. It's 10,678 feet. Or down, depending on where you are and your point of view. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. It's always so peaceful, so quiet. Somehow, about the rest of my life, Right on schedule. Paul, what's wrong? What is it? Paul, are you all right? What happened? A meteorite. A lunar meteorite. A meteorite? We heard about it earlier on TV. Yes, but here? Well, we're right in the area where they're due to fall. I guess we can consider ourselves lucky. What's the matter? You've got a scratch or something on your forehead. I don't feel anything. Oh, no, don't touch it. Let me do that. I must have bumped it when we hit the dirt. Let me clean it up anyway. See, you were bleeding. <laughs> That's nothing. Hey, Kathy. Look at that. Souvenir. My own personal moon rock. <gasps> moon rock? Oh, wow. Did I say something wrong? No, but you just reminded me. I'm supposed to go into town tomorrow. There's a NASA exhibit at the university, and I'm supposed to cover it. That's a great idea. We'll go to the exhibit, then we'll have some supper, then we'll go out afterwards. In, just in case the moon rock hasn't cooled off. Cool enough to travel now. Have you got a first aid kit in that bag? A few things. Why? I'm still worried about that cut on your head. It could get infected. Look, I don't live far from here. And I've got all kinds of antiseptic in my medicine cabinet at my place. Your place? My place. Fine. Your place, then.
gather nobody's home. My mother's in Europe. She travels a lot. usually. Ty looks a lot like a dinosaur. Or like the dragon the Indians call Avenue. Thank you for introducing me to your friend. Well, I hope he didn't frighten you. Paul. It's us I'm really frightened about.
I'm just not sure. Leaving him alone. It's the best way. Paul's still learning a lot of things. Such as? Such as how to accept help from other people. He's used to doing things by, for himself. He's been a loner a long time. It's not easy to change. Even so. Tell you what. If Paul calls me during the night, I'll call you and come pick you up. How's that? I'll buy that.
Thanks, Kramer, for bringing the professor. Hello, Mac. What happened here? A killing. A messy one. The medical examiner's report being phoned in? I'll make sure I'll have a copy of your desk when you get back at me. Good. Let me have copies of the other reports, too. All of them. Yes, sir. Fine. Check in the house and see if you can lend a hand. Now I'll tell you why, exactly why I asked you here. I was wondering. It sounded urgent. It's because I need an opinion from you. My field is in medicine. You know that, Mac. I know. Well, what then? One problem with being a cop is that eventually you think you've seen everything. Well, this morning I found out I was wrong. This is different. Uh, which one is him? The woman had a weak heart. And what she saw when she opened the door apparently finished her. There's no report of any violence on her. But take a look at the man. What kind of thing would cut up someone like that? Could have been a mountain lion, Mac. No, Jenny. Not that easy. I'm going to show you something one of my men found at the back of the house. Whatever. Killed Harris must have tripped over the garden hose and grabbed at the side of the house for support. Uh, take a break. I'll uh, check things here. You're right. That wasn't made by a mountain lion. That mark was made by a human hand. Well, I would agree with you, except for one thing. You tell me what kind of human makes a footprint like that. Now you get the picture, Jeff? When I got that radio call, I thought someone had made a real goof. But when I saw Harris, I had to believe it. Harris was killed by some kind of thing that was nearly seven feet tall. Had hands with claws on the fingers. And walked on feet like I've never seen before. Now that's why I had to bring you here, General. Now you're right, this is not some kind of medical problem. I don't know what kind of problem it is. You're an anthropologist, Johnny. I thought, well, just maybe, you might be able to help us with this. Well, I can't tell you. I've seen a track like that before. Where? In a museum. A fossil track. Several million years old. Have you men made a plastic out of the track? Hmm. We might get a better answer from the paleontology department at the university. The department head, Dietz, he's a friend of mine. Let's go now. The casting should be ready. to make breakfast for us while you hit the shower. Paul! I agree with Professor Salinas. Your casting here is that of the left hind foot of some form of reptile, some very, very large lizard. I still can't believe that there are lizards that big in New Mexico or anywhere else for that matter. Sorry, Captain McCabe, you're wrong about that. There is a lizard we call Varnus comodensis. Uh, there's some photos of him over in the paleontology lab. Who grows to be all of 10 feet long. He's quite a fellow. The Indonesians call him the Komodo dragon. Gee, is it possible that one of these lizards is here? Somehow? I don't think so. And if there were one somehow on the loose, it wouldn't be what you're looking for. The Komodo dragon walks on four feet. 
This indicates a lizard that can walk upright. Some form of reptile closely related to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Thanks, Jenny. But how in the hell am I going to tell a commissioner or anyone down at City Hall? A man was killed on the doorstep of his own home last night by some kind of dinosaur. better than yesterday. Hi. Hi. Hey, they're pretty good. But you should see Johnny work with the boat. Our scholarly anthropologist here was the conference archery champ in college. I've seen his trophies. How about a little demonstration for our camp? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, Johnny Longbow. I'd like to see you live up to your name. everything himself. Even the arrowheads. Everything is authentic Indian. Okay, Johnny. Now let's really impress the lady from New York. You're not talking me out of it this time. I'm staying. You need looking after. Did you take the aspirin? Yes, Master. There. That's better. Dark and restful. You should be able to sleep now. If you should need anything, I'll be right in the den, okay? Okay.
something about a lizard, a big lizard, a big lizard that walked like a man. Seems to me I've heard that expression before. Maybe. Something your friend Dietz said about a dinosaur. The Tyrannosaurus. Well, well, there have been discoveries of supposedly extinct creatures dating back to the dinosaur age. Ancient life forms that are still alive today. Maybe there is a dinosaur still alive up in the hills. Something drove it out of the hills. Now it's on the loose. Professor Salinas, those poor men murdered in the hills last night. Have the police found out who did it? Only some theories. That's all so far. Are those the reason for all that laughter when I drove up? <laughs> They're the pictures Kathy took at the NASA exhibit. You should see the one of Bud looking at the girl in the tight jumpsuit. <laughs> His eyes were popping out. <laughs> what happened in this shot? Oh, this one. I don't really know. It's probably a light leak or a lab error. It's on the original transparency, too. I was going to check with the lab in town later. How is he, by the way? Paul? He seemed a little better when Janet and Bud called for me before. But he still had a headache. I'm worried about him. Those headaches he's been having. He's been having those headaches since the day after that meteor shower. Mm. Didn't you tell me he hit his head in the ground that night? When he tried to shield you from that meteorite that exploded. That's right. He got a cut on his head. A cut? More like a scratch. Just a little one. It's possible Paul may have gotten more than a scratch. A light concussion, maybe. Then you think... But don't worry. <laughs> I thought it might be a light concussion. <laughs> it's nothing really serious. I'll tell you what. I'll pick up Paul on my way. Take him to a hospital. St. Joseph's will be the best. I'll do a cranial x-ray. Check him out. He'll be back to normal and back to you in no time at all. The lab. 
that did this print. It's near the hospital. I'll have that light streak checked out. Save your trip. Hurry up, Slowpoke. I want to get you off my hands. Then your lady can take over. Johnny, you're one hell of a guy. White man, speak with forked tongue. No, quick, let me write that down. Hurry up, will you? I got other things to do. What happened here? Where's Ty? I don't know. He must have broken out the night before last. Something scared him. Maybe the meteor shower. Is this the meteorite you found? It's my own personal moon rock. Funny thing, I've looked through every text I have on mineralogy. And I can't find anything like it. Of course, I haven't run a series of tests on it. You mind if I borrow your moon rock for a couple of days? So go ahead. I was going to take it to the geology lab anyway. Maybe they can find the answer to it. I can't. But right now, we're going to take you over to St. Joe's. Maybe they can find an answer to what's been bugging you. That's it. You can get dressed now. Well, I finished with your friend. It'll take about 20 minutes or so to process the plates. Dr. Sutton's expecting you. He left work you to wait in his office. Thanks. How do you feel? Not bad. Good. While you're waiting, I might as well do an errand near here. I'll be back in a little while. No sweat. Then it's not just some kind of error in printing, Mr. Hamill. Definitely not. I remember looking at the originals on that roll myself. What you see is what happened. I can't explain it, but it's not our fault or the fault of the film. But have you ever seen anything like that before? Never. I've been in this business for years. I'm Dr. Sutton. Would you come this way, please? I've looked at your x-rays. And? We don't usually discuss them with patients. But this isn't a usual case, Mr. Carlson. This is the normal situation, just to give you an idea. And this is the one we took of you. What does it mean? What's happened to me? You've been hit by a small particle of matter of some kind. Not enough to cause any pain because of the high speed. But it is there. Then something's inside my head? Yes. It's not uncommon. There have been cases where servicemen have survived with small particles of shrapnel embedded in their brains. This wasn't shrapnel, Doctor. So I understood. A meteorite, you said? What happens now? Now? Now we're going to keep you here for a few more days for observation. We're going to take more x-rays. If that area doesn't clear up, we're going to do something about it, surgically. I made these photos several years ago when I was doing research for my doctorate. They just might have a connection to your killer lizard. Well, at this point, I'd settle for anything in the way of a leap. Well, let's see him. This is the first scene in the deer hide painting I was shown. Not many people have seen it. It's something like 400 years old. What's happening to the Indian in the painting? It's the beginning of the story. He's being struck by light that comes down from the sky. Well, what happened to him? See for yourself. Whatever struck him from the sky change him completely from human form. He became a demon lizard monster. Arrows had no effect on him. Well, how'd they get rid of this demon lizard? They didn't, but he died anyway. It was consumed by fire. But where the flames came from, nobody knows.
That's a mystery. And it's still a mystery after 400 years. I know what you're thinking. It's only an Indian legend, part of our tribal culture. I know, it's fantastic. But it's the one thing that ties in with what the fisherman said. He said the camp was attacked by a lizard that walked like a man. Now, I want your help, Mac. Well, we've got the place to ourselves. I had him close up early on my authority, and I, I hope this proves something. Well, no, in a minute. I never thought I'd see the day when I try to solve a case of Indian superstition. We are just about to find out. It should be somewhere just about here. What was that? I don't really know. My guess is that there's some unusual element in this fragment that synchronizes with that larger mass over there. And it produces some kind of energy reaction. You mean this energy or whatever it is? You're turning human into a monster? Just like in those Werewolf tales? When there's a full moon in Transylvania? Johnny, I've known you for a long time. You've got to be kidding. I wish I was kidding, Mac. I'm not. But there is an answer. But I think I know what it is. And it makes me sick to think about it. If what you say is true, the X-rays, the way the meteorite reacted, and your Indian legend, then there's something I've got to know from my own peace of mind. Maybe rough. It's right, Paul. Nobody knows what may happen. And let's find out. How much time do I have? You send out in half an hour. The moon will be up an hour or so after that. Before, before anything happens, I want to talk to Kathy. I'm sure that can be arranged. She's at the reservation. I'll phone her now. some idea of what he might have to go through, just to prepare. I'll try. Catherine, I can talk to you if you want. Go in there. You've had to move the wall to another room. Is in there. Why is he in there? Why are these policemen here? We're not sure what may happen to Paul after the moonrise. In fact, moving him here was his idea. But surely... Kathy, this is a hospital. We can't afford to take any chances. The moon has a strong effect on the earth. Look what it can do to the tides. In Paul's case, it may trigger a whole set of changes, a temporary mutation. I want to see him now, please.
nearly sundown now. She shouldn't be in there much longer. All right, I'll get her. Kathy? Kathy? It's true. It was me. I killed all those people. That wasn't your fault, son. They won't convict you. They won't even blame you once the people know the facts. We'll soon have you back to normal, Paul. Do I need these now? No. Dr. Sutton's been in touch with Nath about your case. They're sending one of their top lunar scientists one of the finest brain surgeons in the country. See, that particle of meteor in the front part of your brain, it's causing the problem. When it's removed, you won't have a thing to worry about. You can go back to leading your normal life. I'd like to see Kathy. Please. Please, we'll be landing shortly. When are we due in Albuquerque? In about 20 minutes. The captain got a message a few minutes ago. You and Dr. Lawrence will be met at the airport. Thank you. Uh, may we get off first, please? We just have some hand luggage. That's also been arranged. You and Dr. Rizzo are to be given every cooperation. I must admit I was pretty startled last night when I got the call. So was I. I've never come up against a case anything like it. I've had a few unusual ones, I must say. We've been worried at NASA all through the Apollo program about the possibility that something could cause a mutated life form. Nothing ever happened. Until now. Oh, Paul. This is Dr. Rizzo. How are you, Paul? I'm going to be operating on you in just a little while. Glad to see you. What uh, happens now? We're going to make another set of x-rays just to check on the particle. The new set will give us an exact pinpointing of the spot in the left frontal lobe where it is.
I thought you should see these right away, Doctor. I think we should look at these inside. What's the matter? I don't know, but I'll try to find out. If you look at the difference in the affected areas, you'll notice considerable change, Doctor. There's been a definite growth. From the look of it, I'd say the particle in that young man's brain has disintegrated, and energy factors are spreading through his entire system. No question about it. Isn't there any way of well, neutralizing the effect, Doctor? That's your field, Dr. Lawrence. Is so there something that can be done? We're dealing with a brand new unstable element here, one we've never seen before. We don't know its characteristics, atomic structure, how it reacts. There's a chance. There's always a chance. Eventually, by doing research on the meteorite fragments you showed me, well, we might learn how to cure your friend. At the time, you're saying, by then it'd be too late. I can't give you the timing exactly, but more or less what's going to happen is that the very presence of the moon itself, a moon rock of gigantic size, if you will, will have a recurring effect on your friend's mutation every night, just as the energy emitted by that particle in his brain was triggered by the small moon rock at our exhibit here. Eventually, the diffusion throughout his body will be complete, and that at that point, the situation will be atomically unstable. Then, the energy is released all at once. A form of explosion. Exactly. And when it happens, your young friend will be consumed by it. I've got to talk to you now. Let's go. A demon in the tribal painting. Self-consumed. One Indian mystery solved. Oh, Paul, why couldn't there be time for us? There isn't. And that's why I'm going away. Now, if I'm gonna die, I want to die looking like a man, not like a monster. Paul, don't. I need a few minutes. I've got to get away from here. Get away where? I don't know. But I can't stand being locked up here again. Will I see you again? I, I, I don't know. I want you to go back to Dr. Sutton's office. And if anybody asks where I am, I want you to tell him I'm on the roof. That'll keep him busy enough for a few minutes. Long enough for me. I won't do it. Kathy. Please. Do it for my sake. Do it. Because we love each other. Oh, Paul. Why did this have to happen to you? It did happen. That's all I know.
dunce I've ever seen. Does that kid think he can get away? He's not trying to get away. You don't understand. You just don't. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like a 12-gauge shotgun and some shells. Well, we have some very nice models just came in. Very nice guns. I'll be glad to show them. Here's a description of the man being sought. His name is Paul G. Carlson. He's 24 years old, Caucasian, about six feet tall, weighing 160. Brown hair, a nice one. blue eyes, regular features. Carlson was last seen in the vicinity of St. Joseph Hospital. He's believed dressed in tan slacks and a blue sweater. We got a report on him. The owner of a gun shop says he tried to buy a shotgun, but left without it. I don't think he wants it as a weapon. He wants to kill himself. Why this no one? Because we overheard what Dr. Lawrence said in the other office. That's why. You might be wrong, Mac. He's on a motorcycle. If he wanted to kill himself... No, no, no. Crashes don't always kill people. He knows that. Now, he'd try to find some way that was fast and foolproof. We had some kind of lead on him. Anything. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. It's always so peaceful, so quiet. I can't stand this waiting around. I think it would be better if I went back to the reservation, don't you? I guess so. Uh, well, how will you get back? I borrowed Bud's car. I'll phone you if we hear anything. the motorcycle. Where? Up in State Road 44. He took a spill. The bike is a wreck. But he'd probably walk away all right. They couldn't find him anywhere around the area. That road leads up to Sandia Crest. Of course, that's got to be it. Over the years, I got to know Paul pretty well. The one place he went to when he was troubled, the one place where he felt free, was Sandia Crest.
action, but no gunplay, unless it's absolutely necessary. you intend to do, but you mustn't. Please, you can't. Kathy, I don't know how you found me, but you've got to leave now. No, Paul, I want to be with you. You can't stay. The sun's going down. It'll be night soon. If I don't reach the crest before the moon comes up, You can't stay. Then it'll be too late for the both of us. Oh, <laughs> 
He got away. Two more men dead. Oh, God. It's too late, though. Not now. It's got to be stopped before there's any more killing. Are you going to try and stop it with a bow and arrow? Not with just any arrow, Mac. I'm going to use this. That looks like a piece of meteor palm head. It is. I've fashioned an arrowhead out of it. What are you going to do? Johnny, tell me! We're fighting something we barely understand, Kathy. The changes that are... A particle of matter from outer space is made in a human being. That's why I'm doing this. If a particle can generate all that energy, a larger piece from the same element might speed up the energy processes. Dr. Lawrence, Paul and I heard you in the hospital. You said Paul would become atomically unstable, that he would... It was always inevitable. This way it may happen a little sooner, that's all. Johnny, you can't do it. He's your friend, Paul. Paul is not Paul anymore. You've seen that. Kathy, he's not as you and I know him. Paul is gone. What you see in this place is nothing we know. Nothing human. No! Kid. She's had a rough time. 